Hi, my name is Jason for Funly, and in the past video, we did a getting started on how to use our presets to quickly bootstrap your scene and set up a sky system. While this is a great way to get going quickly, we're going to start over again with a basic empty scene, and we're going to work on how you configure the background sky. This is going to be a great opportunity to go through all the individual options so that you really understand how to build your own custom scenes. So, this is your where you should be at from the, the previous one. You can go ahead and just delete these uh, sky assets that we had created. We're, we'll, we'll recreate them. Let's go to Window, Funly Sky Studio, Setup Sky, and let's pick 3D Blank Sky. This is going to install an empty sky profile and an empty sky controller in the scene, and we'll be able to use this as our building block in Canvas for all of the future tutorials, and we'll walk through every single option and I'll show you what it does and we'll kind of play with it. So let's go ahead and do that. Click Create Sky, but then now you can close this. You can see now we just have an empty, uh, simple gradient and your getting started sky profile is here and this is a material, which is actually the skybox material. It's important to note, you really never want to actually manipulate the skybox material. You want to always work with the sky profile. The sky profile is continuously applied onto the material to keep it in sync whenever values change. So if you set something on the material, it'll likely just get wiped out. Um, it looks like, uh, let's first start with our features section. The features section enables what you're going to end up seeing in the skybox. It looks like I had moon selected. Let's go ahead and deselect everything except for the gradient background. That's what we're going to talk about in this tutorial. If I uncheck gradient background, you'll notice the sky options change and you get a sky cube map. This is if you want to have your own custom backgrounds. And we'll talk about that in the next video. Right now, we select gradient background. So here, you can see we have a sky upper color, sky middle color, and lower color. This is exactly what you'd think. This lets you adjust the colors of the sky to whatever you want. For this tutorial right now, we're going to kind of create a, a nighttime scene and just kind of mess around with the colors and go through the different options below. And you can see how they all work. Something that's helpful is let's just hide our terrain for now because it kind of gets in the way for, for just the demonstration purposes. Let's go back, select the sky profile, and let's go ahead and just create some nighttime colors. This looks reasonable. You can go ahead and click the sky middle color. Let's bring it down to something kind of cool. That looks kind of fun. And then for the lower color, we can pick maybe something. Maybe something like that. So now the next option we have here is the sky middle color balance. This uh, determines how close the middle color is to the upper or um, or the lower color. It basically shifts the shifts the weight of the gradient. Uh, you typically want to have this shifted down a little bit closer to the ground. It gives kind of an atmospheric effect with the terrain. We'll see that later as we bring the terrain back in. But if you wanted just a perfectly linear gradient, just set it to 0.5 and the, it'll be even. The horizon position value lets you shift the gradient to fit your scene. So if your terrain isn't exactly at y equals zero, you can actually just lift it up. And um, that's just a great way to align it and customize it for yourself. The sky gradient length actually lets you stretch the gradient or compress it. It's the distance that the gradient will go from the lower to middle to upper. Um, usually you want to have a pretty long, longish gradient. That way it feels like it's uh, smooth and continual and the user doesn't you notice the breaks in the color. So now these next values are about customizing how the star fits into the back. Stars fit into the background scene. So we're going to bring in a star layer. So just click star layer one. And let's go down and kind of just give it some options here. And it looks like already you can see there are some, some very, I've made them large just for, um, just so that we can see them right now. But let's bring the density up on these stars. Let's make the size more reasonable. Something like 0 0.005 looks fine. And then, you can see there's now stars inlaid into the, the background. So the star start is the position at which we begin like fading in the stars. As I lift it, the stars are only higher up in the scene. 
as I drop it down, the stars come down in the scene. So you can figure out where in your horizon you want the stars to begin or end. The star transition length, you'll notice that the stars don't just suddenly appear, they kind of fade in. So like right here, there's a star, but it's so faint, you can barely see it. This is to simulate kind of a natural atmospheric effect to where you, it's tough to see stars immediately on the horizon. So if I bring the length down, now you're seeing there's sharper stars, and you can see this, the edge, the cutoff edge a lot, a lot harder. If you were going to create something like a 360 skybox uh, with stars, for example, maybe you're doing an outer space scene, then you'd want there to be no transition length, and then you'd want there, the start to be all the way at zero. And now if we look down, you'll notice the stars go all the way around. So let's bring that up to something back that's a little bit more reasonable, like there. Transition length, give it a nice value. And then let's bring our terrain back in. So now you can see we have something that actually looks, looks pretty close to how I might want it to look here. We can go ahead and adjust the horizon position to kind of custom fit our scene. Maybe I didn't really want a gray. Maybe I want something that's a little bit, a little bit stranger, maybe a yellow glow from a sunset that just happened. And that's, that's it for the sky properties. In the next scene, I'll show you how to use a custom cube map in the background, which is popular for uh, artists who want to do highly detailed things in the distance um, without having to take the cost of added geometry in the scene. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.